you both. <laughs> Hello. I begin talking about information abundance with a blank slide. No words, no pictures, but an invitation to you to use your mind's eye. You're hot, you're thirsty. Maybe you've been working all day in the hot sun. And when you finally get to a water source and turn it on, it doesn't just gurgle up with a nice gentle arc. It fires at you like a cannon. <laughs> it's hard to get a drink from a water hose. After knocking you down, you're still thirsty. The quantity and the speed of delivery have affected your ability to get what you need. Abundance of information keeps many of us thirsty. Information is related to education. Teachers inform, we call the well-educated the well-informed. In recent times, we have learning at our fingertips, Ted as case in point. But we still have the same size brains as in earlier times. Now there's more information literally on any one topic than any one of us can grasp. I think I have a smaller brain than in my earlier times, hence my little palm pilot here. To paraphrase Scarecrow in Wizard of Oz, da 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 if I only had a bigger brain. Take that, palm pilot. Next slide, please. <clears throat> well, with enormous tracts of information, that calls for a map, a guide through the territory. Growing up, we all confront the complex world like a new visitor to a large cacophonous city. Until you get to know the town, a map's a helpful thing, an overview, a way to choose your path through the, through the landmarks. Enter liberal learning, a way to provide kind of mental mapping through the information abundance. We have silicon-based life forms that can collect masses of information, computers. What we need are wise and astute carbon-based life units, us. So the larger the collections of information, then we need astute people who can sort through the information, who can interpret its meaning and make judgments about its significance. Then we can make good use of all those information riches. This presents a new task for the tradition of liberal learning. It's still vitally important to learn a critical mass of facts and to get a specialty. But the great purpose of liberal learning is not just for the accumulation of information, but to get ready for specialized work and to live with it once you get there. Liberal learning is education in the arts, humanities, and sciences, and it conclude, include pre-professional fields. The name refers to the personal liberation <clears throat> that you get with a breadth of learning that liberates from ignorance from simple assumptions or from prejudice, and even from conservative or liberal assumptions with the Pat Benatar challenge. It's good to hear your particular commitment, political or otherwise, but what actual effect will that commitment have on our ability to deal with the problems of the day? Go ahead, hit us with your best shot, fire away. Now, maps can zoom in for detail or out for broad overview. General education presents the zoomed out perspective. Classes sample the information universe for broad familiarity. To answer the question, where are we? We could say, we're in Florida. But with a zoomed out perspective, you can get a picture that we're also in the North Atlantic region. So a general education lets you understand your relationships to the things around you. There are at least four benefits to liberal learning, both in college and afterwards. First, the thinking skills enable you to understand patterns in the flood of facts. Pity the great Henry Ford. He must not have had a good liberal education. When he read history, he just called it <clears throat> one damn thing after another. 
And so is the whole information universe until you can begin to detect the patterns in the particulars. Second, all that information is a reminder of what we all went through when we were babies. After all, <clears throat> we tried to learn our native language, but it took us years. And at first, it just sounded like blah, 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 blah. That's baby liberal learning. They are masters at the, gen at the, the generalists of sound. In a similar way, we could call our introductory courses Specialization 101, because they offer the pre-language of disciplines. As you take more courses, you get an increase of fluency, and then you can create your own insights by the time you get to your senior research. Mental mapping also, here's the third point, mental mapping also lets you flip the general reputation for general education. It sounds kind of vague, but it also provides a range of understanding and flexibility. So really, a generalist education is a versatilist education, because it lets students meet the future with confidence. And fourth, <clears throat> the range of courses in liberal learning, the different disciplines, the exposure to different cultures, gives you a better understanding of the unfamiliar and can foster the realization, oh, so that's how these other people with strange ideas are experiencing what it's like to be human. Hmm. Now, there are downsides on the mental map. Too much attention to patterns can reinforce prejudgments or stereotypes. That's why that critical mass of facts is so important to serve as checks on those nasty abstractions. There's another problem. That is, there are many forces in business and politics that would like to kind of stack the facts, emphasizing some and excluding others. Good liberal learning can help you spot those savvy pitches. This reminds me of an ad that was popular when I was young. It had a picture of a little kid, a skinny little kid in a karate outfit. And he would come out eagerly and say, nobody bothers me, because with his martial arts training, he was able to defend himself now against bullies. Well, in a similar way with liberal learning, you can steer through the information abundance and the constant barrage of in interpretations and earn a kind of black belt in intellectual taekwondo. Now, you too can say, nobody bothers me, because no one can schnooker you with selective facts and particular agendas. Oh, you can still hear them out. <clears throat> you may even find some of them persuasive. As you choose, as you find those claims now on your own mental map. Mental maps also include detailed maps. Going back to that question, where are we? <clears throat> we could say we're in the North Atlantic region, but more particularly, we're in Allen Hall. Specialization is the zoomed-in perspective of education. It's the type of work that students will do in their careers later on. The first zoomed-in perspective for most people is with the major. At least a third of an undergraduate's courses are in, a, in their specialties, in majors and minors. And many critics would like to see still more specialization instead of general education. The best of specialization does provide fine-grained understanding and deep knowledge about particular fields. But at its worst, it dictates, if it isn't happening in my specialization, it isn't happening. Imagine this, a brilliant doctor, so specialized in, say, your digestive system, that she or he would ignore the problems in your heart, much less how the medications for your stomach might affect your heart. So take another look at those gen ed requirements. They're more than just little pesky requirements to get out of the way. They're self-defense against those problems of exclusive specialization. I offer my point as a kind of PowerPoint, but with my hands. <clears throat> Here is 
general education, not instead of specialized education, general education to get ready for specialization as a foundation. The next crucial step has to be to practical experience. For linking, the problem, for linking the work of problem understanding in education to the work of problem solving in employment. College classes, <clears throat> no matter how brilliant the professor may be, <clears throat> is only a first step. The next stride has to be to the career office. There was a saying at NASA during the 1960s, moon, uh, missions to the moon of the Apollo program. <clears throat> and it was, if you want to shoot the moon, aim carefully. <clears throat> well, mission career path, mission life direction, see how versatile this thing is? <clears throat> <clears throat> mission life direction is just as important especially for the person holding that life and making those choices. Even a fabulous job that isn't a good fit could have called for better aim. And while you're in your specialty, of course, everyone else is in theirs. So a mental map gives you a better understanding of at least the outlines of those people next to you and gives you a better grasp of your own specialty at its boundaries with those other fields. So good liberal learning can also make you a better specialist. Experts may sneer at the content in introductory classes, but better for them to welcome them for the cultivation of their own audiences. After all, an expert without an audience makes the sound of one hand clapping. Try it. It's kind of quiet. That's what I'm talking about. And if that silent applause is from some of you who remain unconvinced about my tribute to liberal learning, I offer you this, when we have all those experts so well trained in their fields, who will listen to them? Who will care? Who will understand? At the very, very least, liberal learning supplies audiences <clears throat> and maybe some applause with two hands. The value of liberal learning continues even into the high-flying work of specialists who become leaders in their own fields. Leaders, after all, are the coordinators of the work of other specialists. The versatilist leader is able to step outside of specialty silos to address the needs of groups as a whole. Preparation for leadership <clears throat> comes even more immediately available to students even in college. Let's say a student develops mental mapping, thinking skills, and intellectual self-defense. The student is becoming an active agent in his or her own world and the chair of the board of their own education. From that position, you can hire on <clears throat> your staff to help you get the job done, namely your teachers, the librarians, the other support staff. Go ahead, use us. The alternative is a very unliberal education, waiting for others to tell you what to do and what to think. No mental map, the abundance washes over you. <clears throat> Class time, fire hose. Teacher talks, press play. Education, boring. With unliberal education, you have no grip on the information abundance because it's controlling you. So what's it gonna be? The boardroom or the boredom? From the boardroom, you can better deal with later challenges. There'll be even more information, and there'll be massive problems with massive power structures. Any one of us is what social scientists call a statistical zero, with the near zero impact that any one of us can have on the massive world scene. What can one person do? Well, not much about the whole world, that is, but you can do an awful lot about yourself and the things immediately around you. <clears throat> Find the things that you can handle and act on those. Then at least you'll have integrity, even if the rest of the world is going to hell in a handbasket, as my mother used to say. And there's more. <clears throat> Challenges suggest opportunities, and in very concrete ways. 
Problems are related to work. Work emerges from the need to solve problems. Then you get paid. Imagine the contrast. Hello, graduate. It's good to see your fine education, but you know, all our problems have been solved, so we don't need your work. Thank you. On the contrary, we have abundant problems. And bad as they are, they are job security. So, dear graduate, we need your mental map. We need your special skills to deal with all our problems. Please. So, my dear fellow statistical zeros, there is still more. If you have a good idea, it become a model for other people. Isn't that what entrepreneurs and inspiring leaders do? They don't do the expected or what's in the norm. They surprise. And those well-chosen surprises are called innovation. But at first, they too were just statistical zeros. So here's your challenge. Choose to be the chair of the board of your own education, starting with some mental mapping of liberal learning. Try it. You have nothing to lose but your boredom. I'll sign off the way I do with my own students. Do good work. And if you think to yourself, why? What's the point? It's not that good. What impact will it have? You're right. So far. But only so far. Only while you're still making your way through the information abundance. Your work's a treasure because it's your work and because it's a step. So do good work and keep making it better and better and better. That's your homework. <laughs>